Привет, друзья! Как дела? My name is Fedor. Today we're talking about short and long adjectives. Let's look at this phrase. Ты очень красив. You are very beautiful. If you know some Russian, you know that красивый is beautiful. So why do we have красив and what does it mean? Why do we have красивый and красив? Well, красивый is going to be a long adjective. Well, красив is a short one. The reason why we have those short adjectives is because we want to convey some meaning that's temporary. For example, in that sentence, you are very beautiful. If we use a short adjective, it's going to mean that right now, right this moment, you look beautiful. Maybe it's a compliment that a girlfriend gives to his, you know, boyfriend when she sees him when they're going out, going out on a date. He has a nice t-shirt, nice jeans, he looks good. So, she says to him, you are very beautiful right now. Ты очень красив. On the other hand, let's look at uh, if, we, if we use, you know, a, a long adjective. Ты очень красивый. That would mean that naturally, your features of your face and maybe your body are beautiful. Okay? It's something that's more permanent, like constant, right? Something that's long-term and not temporary. Him, his look, the way he looks, his outfit is temporary because he's going to change that. Okay? So, basically, every time we want to convey a meaning that's temporary, that's like right now, we use short adjective. And to be honest, I haven't realized that until, yes, until I started doing the research on this topic. Those things just come naturally to me and I had to give it some thought. So, when you're going to encounter those short adjectives, typically they're going to have some context from which you can easily tell that this, you know, adjective is used to convey a temporary meaning. So, since I didn't know of the difference, right, it means that it's something that's very natural, very contextual. So, whenever you're going to be speaking, look for those cues that are going to tell you whether to use long or short adjective. But also, I gotta say this, most of the times, when you're not sure which one to use, go with a long one, okay? Because a long one it can convey both meanings, temporary and then, you know, more constant meaning, okay? So if you're not sure about which one to use, use the long one, okay? But now let's talk about how we form them. Typically, let's look at um, the word свободный. Свободный is a long adjective. And of course, we're going to have different genders of this adjective. It's going to be masculine, feminine, neuter, and plural. So, table is in front of you right now. Masculine, свободный. Feminine, свободная. Neuter, свободная. Plural, свободные. Okay? I'm going to leave the short version of masculine off for now. And I'm going to go straight to feminine. Свободна for feminine, short, свободна, but with all at the end, even though it's pronounced the same, it's going to be a different spelling. And then finally, свободны. As you can see, we simply remove the last letter of the long adjective. So, with feminine, we removed ya, with neuter, we removed ye, and then the same with plural, we removed ye as well. But it's going to be a little bit different for masculine. For masculine, it's going to be свободен. Even though we removed two letters, right? We removed ich from the long one. We are going to add another vowel between d and n at the end of the short one. The reason for that is that we don't want to have two consonants in a row. Okay? Because if we didn't have the vowel, it would sound as свободен. Свободен. It doesn't sound very, you know, natural, very beautiful, right? So we add that ye to it so it can sound more, so it can flow better. Свободен. Instead of свободен. What is that, right? So свободен. And typically when we're going to have two consonants at the end, we're going to always place a vowel in between. Typically it's going to be ye. Okay? So whenever... At the end of the short one, after you remove the ending, you still have two consonants, put a vowel in between, typically it's here. But if it's something else, you will know, because it's going to just not sound good. It's going to be 
not natural, okay? Even though right now it's probably confusing for you, but don't worry, it's not too often. But if it happens, just add a year. Most of the time, it's going to work. Okay? So, свободный and свободен, right? It's long and short. I'm going to give another example of the meaning. We would use свободный to talk about a person when it's, you know, his state. Like, for example, an American asks a Russian, are you free in your country? Are you free, like, permanently, always? Not just today, but always. Do you feel free in the country, right? But if we say свободен, it's going to be more of temporary, more of like, are you free today? So it's going to more, be more short term, all right? So I think we've talked about everything, even though I didn't give you guys a lot of examples. I have included a whole document in the description of, the, of this video because it doesn't make sense for me to just talk about the sentences and the different words and, and their meaning because, you know, it's just going to be a waste of time. But you can download that, you know, file to your computer and read it and, you know, learn new words. Okay, so check it out in the description down below. But that's it for me. I hope I helped you guys. I hope that I, you know, elaborated on this enough. If you still have some questions, please go, go to, the, to, the, to the comments and let me know, okay? I'll see you there. Пока-пока.